problem is that w the economy has hurt substantially. And as a result of the economy, people not working, they're obviously not paying Social Security taxes, they're not paying FICA, and they've put out a new estimate that the Medicare funds will now run out in 2024, which was five years sooner than inspected, and that the Social Security Trust Funds, that the, the checks that you About get About $8 trillion. Month, dollars, uh, yeah, well, it used to be. Used, well, uh, they claim that that's what we should have, well, including That's right, payments. which of course we don't have. I mean, and that's uh, going to run out in 2036, which is a year quicker than expected. Mm -hmm. And the trend is that these things keep on getting depleted more and more and more quickly and more quickly. I'm not one that likes to tax and spend. I'm not one that likes to pay taxes either. But one of the things that bothers me about the system of taxation when it comes to Social Security, I get to a certain point every year and I stop paying it. That doesn't make any sense. Why should somebody like Donald Trump, who makes more than probably the village of Mayville combined in a year, pay the same amount of Social Security that I do? And I understand the argument is that it, it hurts it, taxes aren't good, but you know, we're talking about 7.65% total. When you're making $100 million a year, that extra $76,500 likely isn't going to break you. Not but to even what, see it. Yeah, but, but what it might do is help to restore the funds that are available in both the Social Security and the Medicare funds. You know, I don't know that most people who are drawing Social Security and Medicare now would complain that Donald Trump should have to pay more than about $7,600 a year in Social Security. And the whole bunch of the 1% of the country now owns 80 and 90% yeah. of all the wealth. And they're not paying their fair share. They haven't and they never will and under the present congressional setup. Right. But one of the things that you mentioned too was inflation. Now, one of the hedges that I think you can get into, I, I buy them myself. I used to buy savings bonds. I still buy savings bonds. I used to buy the double E and then the E bonds. And now what you have is something called an I-bond. They just announced May 1st, for the next six months, the I-bond, I, by the way, standing for inflation, I-bonds are going to pay 4.6% interest over the next six months. Now, obviously, that is adjusted every six months. But I, meaning inflation, that is the rate of inflation that actually exists. I don't care what the government Phony figures. The That's right. It says there's figures. no inflation or there's mild inflation. <coughs> Based upon analyses over the past six months before May 1st, they have determined that the, in, uh, excuse me, the inflation rate is 4.6%. Now, for those of you that invest in I-bonds, that's a good deal because you go to a bank, you get, what, 0.2, you get a CD, you get 0.3. I mean, there's no m ways you can make money unless you invest in the market. But what they have here now is a bond that pays 4.6%, a good investment tool, but more importantly, a reflection of what the inflation actually is. Tell somebody who drives a motor vehicle, for example, that has to pay gas, which is everybody, that costs haven't gone up. My gas this morning when I went by was 4079. I was out in California visiting my son the end of last month. It was 4379 there. Is that 50% in the last year? It is. And what's this 4%? Doesn't I mean diddly when you're paying 50% more. Well, you know, the, the sad part about that is, and what I dislike about what's happening with oil prices are, every company has to make profit in order to survive, in order for the economy to thrive. However, it seems to me like every three to five years, the oil speculators and oil companies decide that they're not making enough money, and they take the money from us in order to pad their pockets. Now, I don't mind them making a reasonable rate of return, but when you've got oil companies making $13 billion profit in a quarter, we're not talking about in a year, $13 billion profit in a quarter, don't you think there's some way that they can spread some of that wealth to the people that are making them wealthy to keep gas prices down and, somewhat? And furthermore, there's another criminal element there, and that is they're getting a big tax break because they need it. Who needs yeah, it? When, I know. You're, when you, your economy, you're, you're making more money than the entire economy of half the world at this point. In a quarter. I mean, it's insanity what's going on here. But the worst thing of all is they've been kidding the seniors along with the federal phony figures, the uh, so-called core inflation, which is meaningless. In the last eight years, seniors have lost 60% of their purchasing power. Now, what the hell are they supposed to do now? Yep. Get a job at 85 over at Walmart? 
And that sure. The government did just announce, of course they downplay it, that last month's inflation was four tenths of one percent. And people say, gee, that's really not bad. Four tenths of one percent is hardly One month. Inflation. That's one month. That's exactly right. That's almost equivalent to five percent a year. And uh, that's a fraction of what it really is. That's correct. A fraction of what it really is. Because the things that people the seniors need, the average middle class needs, are things that have gone up the most. Food prices have skyrocketed, uh, commodity prices have skyrocketed, our oil has clearly skyrocketed. Those costs have gone up exceedingly more than the 4.8 percent, the 5 percent, the 7 tenths and of 1 percent. now they haven't given them any cola for the last three years. Correct. That means I'm going to eat another leek. See this? That he's going to shoot me with his breath. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Mmm, delicious. Mmm. So at any rate, Congress has reneged on their contract with the seniors. They're starving them now. They're going to wind up eating this guy, this stuff right here. The stuff they eat during the depression. That's cat food. It's cheap and it's edible. However, in Reed's case, he has leeks to mix with it to make it taste better. Yeah. And my daughter says, you know, I, I'm going to be living in a basement like all the other seniors living in their children's basements. They can't afford their, their houses. You notice the houses for sale, half of them are seniors now. When the county puts them up for sale for taxes and stuff, I know because they can't afford them anymore, they're losing their houses right and left. They're going to wind up, we're all going to wind up living in our children's basement and eating cat food. But my daughter says, don't worry, Dad, you will not have to eat cat food all the time. You get a hot dog on your birthday. Which very is good. Very, you know, she's caring anyway. Uh, talking with Jim, uh, subject Jim, can't class action suit. I mean, the the Congress has violated their contract under Social Security by denying us a real cola and faking it out and lying about it, stealing all the money in the trust fund. It's been pilfered away, and this transcends political parties. They're all yeah, fault. of course, and it, it, uh, just the administration has been going on for years. That's right. And you, it doesn't matter who's president. Doesn't matter who's yeah. in control of Congress. The net result is always the same. N senior citizens, average citizens are being wind up screwed on, to right. death. They wind up on the short end of the stick. They wind up having to struggle more and more each year. Now, I understand that the economy in times of plenty, everybody prospers, everybody thrives. I guess that goes back to the old Reaganomics theory of trickle down, where when we're doing well, the wealthy get really wealthy, and those on the bottom of the scale get a little bit of, of some of the drops that yeah. fall. Which doesn't drop much. It doesn't drop very much, but it drops a little bit, and everybody does a little bit better. But we're not in times of plenty right now, and the seniors, the middle class, the lower middle class, even the upper middle class, struggle mightily because the most significant asset they have, that being their house, has lost significant value, to sometimes to the point where you have a house that is worth less than what you owe on it. And, and you may have been paying the mortgage for years. Yeah, and, and some states like Arizona, they are prohibited from collecting debt beyond what is the actual value. So if, for example, your house is 100000 and you owe 200000 what they do is they walk away from it because they can't enforce the other 100000 The bank is out 100000 which makes life miserable for everybody. The person is out of house. And then, of course, you have the problem of more vacancies, more vacant houses. Uh, it, it just breeds things. It breeds yeah. crime. It breeds unrest. It breeds just nasty things that always, excuse me, always affect senior citizens in particular and the middle class citizens. And it, it doesn't matter, again, because of politics. It, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, if, I don't care who you elect. They talk a good game, and then when it comes time to say, this is what we're going to do, they don't. They yeah, screw you. The seniors are getting screwed. That's a very, there's no other term for it. Uh, we got Jim Subject. Well, this is, hello, caller. Thank you hello, for waiting. Good morning. Good morning. What's Can up? Can you tell me, is AARP or any other large senior group doing anything about any of this? I mean, all we're hearing is a lot of talk from everybody. Now, I'll, but I'll, I'll tell you. I watched, anything. Uh, caller, I watched the president of the AARP on... Uh, H uh, on the uh, financial show, and uh, she had an opportunity to, to to say why the seniors are in trouble. They're collecting food for seniors, among other things. Well, they're, yeah, they're in trouble. And uh, the uh, the interviewer said, "Well, what's the problem?" She said, "Oh, it's one thing, it's another. We're working on it. We're forming committees." Darn right, you are. You are. You, she should be saying this government should be condemned from top to bottom because they're not giving the seniors their cola. Their cost of living is killing them. They've lost over half the cost of their purchasing power of a dollar in the last six years. 
in all fairness to ARP, AARP, they do lobby and lobby strongly for significant changes. The problem is ARP is only one of many lobbying groups. You want to talk about lobbying groups, probably the most powerful lobby in the world is the NRA. Uh, politicians are deathly afraid that the NRA may decide that they're going to campaign against them. Whether their thoughts are just the opposite of what NRA believes or whether what you do believe in NRA it doesn't matter. The point is they're a very powerful lobby and as a consequence of it they get their agenda passed. The oil companies, the businesses, the Chamber of Commerce. The Chamber of Commerce is an organization that everybody's heard of. Most people don't understand the Chamber of Commerce is really just a very rich, very powerful lobbying organization. So while ARP has the ability to lobby ARP represents a relatively insignificant amount of people. When I'm talking about insignificant amount, I'm talking about percentage-wise. While the senior population is growing throughout the country, the population is getting larger and people are living longer, in the scheme of things, seniors don't comprise, I'm guessing, more than 15 or 20 percent of the entire population of the United States. That being the case, then those in power look at it and say, well, that's a smaller group than those, for example, of gun owners and gun rights activists. But they all vote. They all vote. They better watch the seniors. They, they vote. should, and I agree. But the problem is, is sometimes they don't vote. You look at elections nationwide, you look at elections regionally, and the, pop, or the percentage of people turning out to vote is always pathetically small. And unfortunately, you have people complain about the state of politics, and half the times they're the ones that don't vote. I always say, if you don't participate in the system, you really don't have an absolute right to complain about it. Well, I want to say one thing about the ARP. They should be up front there. Tell they you, are. you know, seniors are in a desperate emergency situation They have now, been. And I haven't heard a word, a peep out of them about this situation, the COLA not being granted that, to the seniors. That's correct. They have not been They should be all them. over that one. And uh, only, uh, every day I see half a dozen ads selling insurance. ARP sells a lot of insurance, that's for sure. Car insurance, life Car, insurance, insurance long-term insurance. Health insurance. insurance. Yes, I They know. did away with the, uh, <laughs> they, they personally campaigned against the uh, catastrophic care uh, that was a bill that was passed a few years ago in Congress, and they re Congress reversed it. Well, it affects their insurance, their health insurance. Yeah. They're the biggest health insurance company in the world, for Christ's sake. And uh, they say, well, we're not a health insurance company. Well, they get a billion dollars a year from their insurance people. And where does it go, incidentally? We're not sure. What's good uh, lots of calls here. Good morning, caller. Good morning. What's good up? Morning. Um, I, I, I'm calling just to, to uh, uh, um, at, tell everybody I'm glad to be back. I've been gone for a while. And, uh, that, Welcome back. Uh, Welcome back. Um, How's your health? You okay? I'm okay right now, yes. I'm eating a leek right now. I don't love leeks. Well, this is the time of the year. This yep. is the time of the year. One more and you'll be able to smell it in your home. I was going to say, don't kiss anybody right now, though. No. <laughs> well, they got to have a leak, see, then they don't even know. Oh, that's true. That's true. That is true. Um, your guest was, was talking about uh, elder care and, yeah. and also the laws that, are there laws that are specifically just for the older people or do you know all the laws apply to everybody or do they have to have special laws to protect older people from well sometimes it's it's abuse and things like that well, actually they do I can't speak for every state but there are states our state for example does have special laws that protect seniors from physical abuse from psychological abuse from mental abuse the real problem in many of the cases, and I can speak from my experience doing criminal law, which I've done for over 35 years, uh, is that oftentimes when it comes time to senior abuse, you have a witness who's unable to communicate the abuse that's been perpetrated upon them. Mm -hmm. And although there is a way to prosecute a case circumstantially, it's much more difficult to do than it is if you have direct evidence, that meaning an eyewitness to an event or somebody that's been the actual victim of the event to say and describe what occurred. So what you have is laws that are in place, but oftentimes difficult to enforce, mostly because even though 
it's kind of like when you have a kid at home and you see a broken egg on the floor. You know the egg didn't walk out of the refrigerator, roll off the cabinet, and fall on the floor by itself. It's likely your grandchild or your child that did that. Or the dog. Or, or the, the dog. dog. Well, you know it happened that way, but you can't say that anybody witnessed it. And if you don't have anybody to say how it may have happened, then you can only presume how it happened, but as you know in the law, it requires proof beyond a reasonable doubt. And actually, in a circumstantial evidence case, it's even more difficult. You have to